So here we are in the original town hall of Swindon, um, which is now dedicated to dance. But in 1919, this plaque was erected in here to commemorate all the Swindon men who had died in the Great War, who were known at that time. There are 920 or so names on here. There's a few more added down at the bottom. Um, but it's believed that another three or 400 men have, have sort of been identified since. To put that into perspective, Swindon today is four or five times the size that it was then. So this number of men, if you scaled it up to today's population, it would be the equivalent of 20 men being repatriated through Raw Wooden Bassett every single week for five years. That's an awful lot. So if you imagine the, the devastation that that uh, created for the town back then, and there's a couple of examples here of just how powerful that devastation was. Uh, William Pitt, for example, uh, lived with his wife Celia. They had six children. He was an older soldier. He, he'd been a soldier previously. He signed up, uh, went to war. As a consequence of the, the, the bad conditions, he developed tuberculosis and, and came home um, where he lived in the shed, lived in the garden shed for three months before he eventually died. Uh, meanwhile, just a little bit further down the list, the Preeters, uh, three brothers here, three brothers from a family of ten children. Their parents owned a pub and a haulage business. Uh, four of the, their children, four of their boys were old enough to go to war. Four went to war. These three sons didn't come back. They were all killed in action. So we're here in the original Swindon Town Hall uh, and I've got some documents here that relate to somebody who was very important during the war, although she never left Swindon. Uh, and her name was Mary Slade and she was head of a committee called initially the uh, Comforts for the Wiltshires. And uh, Mary and another lady called Kate Handley uh, and uh, other local women collected things that were knitted that troops might have needed in the trenches. So it was balaclavas, gloves, scarves, socks, uh, etc. And uh, Mary Slade was particularly important. She, she was the real sort of force behind this committee. And all of the stuff was collected, was brought here to the town hall, where it was all parceled up and labelled, and then sent off to devices to be shipped out to France. But uh, after a while, letters started coming through from prisoners of war in Germany about the hardships they were facing. So the committee stepped up a gear and started collecting food uh, and sending parcels out to prisoners of war, especially men from Swindon later on in the war. Um, for her work, Mary Slade received a um, certification from the British Red Cross Society for her uh, Red Cross uh, services, as they described them. Um, but she also uh, received uh, uh, an MBE. So here's a certificate signed by the King, George V, um, and here, here is uh, uh, Mary Slade's medal. Uh, an interesting aside, it was made by Garrards, who of course, shortly after the war, moved down to Swindon and became quite a famous sort of Swindon uh, company in their own right. Um, but the reason why Mary was important uh, is perhaps uh, best described by this memorandum from the, uh, the publishers of the OBE record, which the, M the MBE sits under. And it says, the European war called forth an immense effort, not only from sailors, soldiers and airmen, but also from civilians. So here we are in front of the uh, very familiar Swindon Cenotaph, the memorial uh, to all wars actually now, but it was originally constructed uh, as a memorial to the soldiers of the, uh, the Great War, the 1914-18 war, although strangely it wasn't the original cenotaph. Uh, at the end of the war the council were very keen that there must be a, a monument, as were the people, and a large wooden ed edifice was built further down here uh, where we, we now have the modern uh, water feature. 
uh, the, the people of Swindon really didn't like this ugly, big, fat uh, block of wood thing. So uh, they were very relieved when a, a proper architect was brought in to design this cenotaph, which anybody who knows the, uh, um, the memorial services that happened in London will recognise this is very, very similar. It was, it was clearly the style at the time. Uh, this one, although it was originally uh, dedicated, as I say, to the 1418 war, you can see that the original stone has been taken out and another one added for the 3945 war. But cleverly at that time, they also added for all conflicts thereafter. The uh, town hall in uh, 1418 was, of course, the centre of all activity in Swindon, being the town hall. It was actually where the council held all their meetings uh, and uh, uh, made all their decisions about everything. Um, one of the uh, main functions of the council during the war in terms of relating to the war was fundraising and as part of the fundraising uh, it, in uh, May 1918, of course nobody knew when the war was going to end, uh, it was decided to have what they called Tank Week and an aeroplane flew over Swindon and dropped leaflets telling everybody that there was going to be a tank in town and indeed there was. Uh, HM Tank 113 rolled up, uh, came down Victoria Hill with bands and uh, parades and everybody cheering. They built a huge barrier for it with sandbags and uh, barbed wire, which it climbed up over to it till it was almost vertical and then collapsed over the other side. And then made its way down here to the town hall where it sat for a week and people buying their bonds in the town hall could then come out and have them stamped inside the tank. Uh, of course the tank you would expect had a big macho name like warrior or formidable or something. Actually, uh, tank, HM Tank 113 was called Julian. Nobody knows why. But uh, uh, looking up on the, on the town hall, you can see there's a flagpole there. In actual fact, a flagpole after the end of the war in 1919, the council put up a flagpole out here, which they were going to put a flag on it that was supposed to be a memorial to the men. Uh, who had been lost during the war and indeed those who had fought and come back. Um, the council presented certificates like this to all the men who returned and a cigar and there was a big event here with the flagpole uh, newly erected out here but some men didn't like this and set fire to the flagpole and as a consequence they burnt it to the ground and a riot ensued and two different versions of the riot uh, are with us now. One was the council view, which was very much, this was just a small, unruly element who were just determined to find some sort of trouble. Uh, but meanwhile, a, a, an ex-soldier called William Blake, who had been a tank instructor during the war, he witnessed the whole thing. And as far as he was concerned, it was a wonderful sight to behold. These soldiers carried the burning flagpole all the way down Regent Street and into Bridge Street, singing uh, at the top of their voices. And as far as William Blake was concerned, they were just letting off all that sort of steam of four years of hardship. <laughs>